Let's make dead man mode great again. I absolutely love dead man mode, so I really want to see it survive. Like I've always PK'd for like five, six years on this game, and it's something I do really enjoy. Especially on dead man mode because it's everywhere. Any situation, you've just got to use your knowledge of the game to outwit people and to survive. I think Dead Man has been great for the game. People say it's dead content mode, but I think it's only dead content because at the moment it's flawed in design. And in this video, I'm going to go through some options of how to improve the game mode, make it more accessible for casual players rather than people that just play 15 hours a day, etc. I think even the biggest critics of Dead Man mode will admit that there's no doubt that it has increased the population of this game. I mean, just looking down the worlds now, look how many people are online. This was not the case a year or so ago, and it is fantastic. I know other updates have helped, but the exposure on Twitch, I mean, when the last Deadman Mode tournament was out, BOSI, tons and tons of viewers, the RuneScape official Twitch channel had tons of viewers, and it was just fantastic to see the game getting so much exposure. Boxing. With how the current PGA timer works, players are able to box a school player and no one else can PGA them off. This is a ridiculous game mechanic. It means people can skull up with no risk at all. I'm heavily against this. Jagex said they'd do something to fix it and nothing got done at all. As much as I like the PGA timer, I think this is a massive drawback and definitely needs to be looked into. There needs to be a way to stop people from boxing, whether it's if you hit seven or eight zeros in a row you can pj off or something similar or maybe if you don't do a certain amount of damage say if you don't do 30 damage in a minute then you can pj off as well because otherwise people just win strike and hit a one and reset the timer increased pj timer the next thing i want to talk about is i want to increase the pj timer i want to make it longer than it takes to teleport this would negate clans in singles it'll be so much easier to fend for yourself in a single combat area i don't think clans should have so much power as they do in singles right now i think they should dominate multi that's fair enough there's more of them but in singles this will help solo players so much okay so i've got a clip on screen just to demonstrate how this works at the moment i could try and freeze someone who's trying to attack me run around a tree run under them whatever and then click telly and I would be able to get out of that situation alive. Doesn't matter if they had 100 people there because the PJ time would be longer than the time it takes to teleport. This could also help people out who aren't PKing. Say if you're doing a quest, you bring some entangles with you and you catch the PK, you entangle them and then you're able to teleport out by running around a tree, running around a building, whatever it may be. Immunity. Next up, I think you should be given a grace period after you kill somebody, so you should be immune from attacks for that period. Say you're taking on massive clan, but you're on one of those members. Because of the PJ timer, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't matter that there's so many of them, and it's a fight to the death. If you kill them, I think you should be given 30 second immunity, whatever, something like that, so you can enough time so you can loot and telly the grand exchange. So currently, how it works with the GE is that if I have offers in, say, selling my Elijah in the Grand Exchange, and someone comes and kills me, they won't get that Elijah. It disappears from the game. I don't get to keep it in my GE offers. It doesn't drop to my bank. It doesn't drop to the floor when they kill me. It disappears. I don't think that should be a thing. I think that should be included in your bank tab when you die. For me, that's logical. I don't know if that would take tons of dev time to work that out, but I definitely think it is something which does need to be done. Lockable content and stats. Now, a quick disclaimer, the time scales of these locks aren't necessarily what I want. It's just an idea to open people's minds to this concept. I think all combat related stats should be locked along with the Slayer skill because that really brings sort of high level items into the game and it could do quite early okay so initially the locked content in the game i think ancient should be locked barrow should be locked zora should be locked king's ransom should be locked and god wars dungeon should all be locked you shouldn't be able to access any of this 
at the start of Dead Man Mood. Also, I think all of your combat stats and Slayer should be locked at 60. This would last for the first three days, so this gives casual players enough time to get up to these stats and actually PK, because I think the problem with Dead Man Mode is casual players don't get the chance to PK. They're always coming on, oh, I want to get my Athers Accumulator. They end up dying someone with Blitz. Like, they need a chance to PK, and that's going to help the game thrive. If everyone can get up to that level, it becomes very much about skill and beating your opponent and outwitting them in a certain situation. So I think the level locks will really help that and definitely slow down the progression. I mean, this dead man mode, day three, someone had Barrage. Like, what the fuck? How are you supposed to compete with that unless you play 15 hours a day or have a clan? So for the first three days, stats should be locked at 60. Then after these three days, the lock goes up to 70. So around this time, we're thinking, what's the PK setup gonna be? Definitely range, range mage, probably prominent. You can also, you can still get a DDS. It's not gonna be that powerful, but you can try Brid in this low setup, say Iben, probably the best setup would be Iben's Staff, Magic Shortbow with a DDS to spec as well. We'll see a lot more people PKing, especially because you don't have hours and hours of XP to be lost. So that's what Dead Man's Mode is about. We want people PKing, getting out there, getting skulls, dying for the banks. This, this is what Dead Man is to me. I think this is great. Okay, so after the week period, bearing in mind everyone is at level 70 at this point, I think Ancient Spells should be unlocked. I don't think you should lock the quest, I think you should be able to do the quest at any point, just to avoid clans locking it down from day 7. It's just the spell book is locked at that point, you can't pray at the altar and get Ancients until day 7. Now at this point on the timeline, we're talking about Ice Burst coming in, definitely a lot more powerful than having to snare and things like that but not so powerful that it's going to absolutely dominate lower levels. Okay, so day 10, increasing the stats to 80 at this point is fair enough. This will enable people to pot Ice Blitz, but they won't be having things like Carol's Crossbows and stuff like that. And this is 10 days. I had Ice Blitz for something like 50 hours after the game release, like on day, start of day 3. Now that is ridiculous, it should not be like that. Okay, so after two, two weeks, Barrow's Gear comes into the game gives people something that they can really make money off in preparation for grinding their mage and stuff for barrage. Also, it provides some tank armor. After three weeks, I think we should see a level 85 stat ceiling, King's Ransom unlocked, so that's, that's Piety, and also God Wars Dungeon. I think it's important to remember that the seasons are three months, so we can't draw the process out too much because people are going to want to have time with these stats okay so by day 28 a month in i think any level goes this is when barrage is going to come in hopefully people have prepared well enough for this moment this really helps to give the average player a better opportunity to be able to compete in a PKing game mode and then after five weeks maybe zora should be unlocked you get your surf helms coming in i honestly hate venom but i think it would be sad to exclude parts of old school from dead man mode but anyway i'll say it again these are not set in stone exactly what i want it's just i do want this concept like if you can just imagine what people would be bking in in at each stage it's not it's not op lost experience okay so we've all probably experienced we've just died we've lost some of our bank and then you click on your stats icon and Sometimes that can be the worst feeling in the world. You've got no telly to Varrock, you're just stuck there in Lumbridge looking at your stats, which I'm not entirely sure about this one. I've got two options that I think they should either do. I think they should lower the penalty lost on death for schooled people. If you die when schooled, you lose so much and it really discourages PKing in what is supposed to be a game mode all about PvP. Also, I think they should make it no XP lost unschooled. I actually don't think it should be a thing. I think this is probably the main reason casual players quit the game mode. My second option for this is you lose the XP as you do now, but you have a 10 times XP rate to gain back that lost XP. So that's definitely an incentive to get on the rebuild. 
I probably prefer this option more because it does, you do carry a lot of risk from dying and it's not just like a PvP world. So I definitely prefer the second option, but I know some people would prefer the first. Swapping. Another point I want to address is swapping. With everything I've laid out so far, because things are locked, there's not a massive rush to get Barrage, not a massive rush to get 99 range, you can't trade over from old school, buy yourself tons of chins, stuff like that. I don't think there will be a massive demand for swapping as much. I mean, obviously it'll still go on, and I don't know how you can, I don't know how you can stop it. In my opinion, it's impossible to control. You can't stop it at all. Also, with muling, I think that, you, again, how can you stop muling? The only thing I could think of would be own a trade limit of, say, 50k. So you could still trade your mate some sharks when he's dying of poison. But that trade limit also incorporated with Grand Exchange only trading. I'm not a great fan of this. I don't, I don't really think it should come in, but it might be a good thing for the game mode. There is potentially ways around it in the sense that, say if I acquire an obscure item, for example, I get a Zamorak Brew 1 dose. Who the hell is going to be buying that? I could trade it to an alt and then sell that Zamrak Brew for 2 mil cash. Obviously it doesn't sell. And then buy it on my main for 2 mil coins. So my alt gets that 2 mil, but the main just gets a Zami Brew. That money has been muled off. I mean, I think that would work for swapping because I don't think people would want to do that. Trust people to do that properly at all. It would make it harder, so I guess that's good. But then... I just remember hating the trade limit. I just remember being so like annoyed at Jagex for introducing the trade limit originally and it's got so much stigma that I doubt that would ever pass if it was pulled. Banking. You might not know this is a change, this is a, re a recent thing, but after you bank you can't press on food for a certain amount of seconds. I think this should be increased because currently you can just stick pre Melee up, get your tank armor on it's very likely you are going to survive. You can still flick your prayers if you see them switching and stuff like that. I don't think sh people should be able to bank, bank tank in this game mode. All the changes I've mentioned previously really favour solo players. So I think we should take away bank tanking. Let's make let's increase that time. But let's make it a lot. So if you, if you do want to withdraw from a bank, you're at a serious risk of dying. Variation. Lastly, I want to talk about variation. This is variation between seasons. I think if we want Deadman to keep thriving season upon season upon season, things have to change about Deadman. Obvious ones which comes to mind is locking accounts at one defense for the entire thing, so it's just pures running around, or as Deadman where everyone's a Zerker, there's only maybe one where all quests are unlocked. There's various ideas about it, I'm sure a lot of you have heard different spins on it. Anyway, thanks for watching this video guys. If you have got any comments about this, any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'll respond to absolutely all of them. And like I've said multiple times in this video, things like the stat lock, they're not set in stone. It's just a concept to bring it into people's minds to really make them think about what could be possible with Deadman. I love Deadman. I want to see it succeed. So if you've got any innovative ideas, just post them down below and we can discuss it. Hopefully someone will see it and we can make this game great again. <laughs>